Welcome to another video. I'm going to do some calculus today. It's been a while. So we have a nested radical of x plus the nested radical of x plus the nested radical of x. So as you can see, we just have x under the radical and we keep adding other nested radicals. Okay. And we need to integrate this nested radical from 0 to 2 with respect to x. This is something that is easy once you can find the representative function because there must be something you can write in shorthand whenever you have something that goes into infinity when it comes to nested radicals, if you've seen other videos. So that's what we're going to do. We'll first find what function this represents and then it will be easy for us to integrate. Let's get into the video. So we're going to begin by finding what the function is. And it's always good for us to have a good idea. Well, let's, let's put a line here. Ta. So anytime you're dealing with re nested radicals, for example, if I tell you that if I say x plus x plus x plus x plus, and it goes on forever, what is the total of this? Notice that <laughs> the sum of all these x's, if it goes on to infinity, is infinite. If x is positive, right? It's positive infinity. If x is negative, it's negative infinity, right? So it's just negative, a negative number plus a negative number. It's going to get more and more negative. But notice that if I remove one of the x's, maybe I should use numbers. Let's say 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus, and it goes on to infinity. The answer to this is infinity, right? Because you're just adding an infinite number of 3's which is three times infinity, which is infinity. So if I remove one of the terms, what is the answer? It is still infinity because you're still having an infinite number of terms, right? So that's the idea behind nested radicals that go on infinitely because it doesn't matter where you start. If I start here, it still goes on to infinity. If I start here, it goes on to infinity. It doesn't matter where I start. It goes on to infinity, right? So if I say that, let me call this number t. If t equals 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus tap, 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 tap. Notice that t is also equal to 3 plus 3 plus tap, 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 tap. There is no difference between this and this because this is an infinite number of 3's and this is also an infinite number of 3's. So infinity minus 3 is still infinity. Okay? That's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to say let y be equal to this radical, x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of tap, tap, tap. I'm just going to say let y be equal to that. Notice that y is equal to the square root of x plus, you see this guy here, is also y. So y is equal to the square root of x plus y. By the way, we must know that the x we're dealing with is positive. Remember, since we're dealing with real numbers for integration and differentiation, we're not doing any complex number integration. Okay, we're just doing, so x has to be not negative. Okay, it could be zero. Okay, so we have, so we say y 
is definitely greater than or equal to zero and x is greater than or equal to zero. That's the only way we can have this radical as a function, okay? Now, what does this mean? It means we can actually, what are we looking for? We're looking for y because that's, we want to know what this function is so we can easily integrate it. So what we're going to do is say, if we square both sides, we have y squared is equal to um, x plus y, and now we can pull this y to this, everything actually, we have y squared minus y minus x is equal to zero. What are we looking for? We're looking for y. So we can find y by using the quadratic formula. <laughs> okay, so using the quadratic formula, we know that y equals minus b, which is going to be 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. b squared is 1 minus 4ac will be minus 4 times minus x, which is going to be plus 4x. Nice. All over 2a. x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, with this expression, we have found y, but there are two options we have. We have the plus option and the minus option, but we know the minus option is not possible because any number you get here will be greater than 1. Therefore, it's going to give us a negative y, but we said y has got to be positive. You will definitely get a positive number here because x is positive. Okay, so we're taking the positive option, no negative. So we're going to go here and say that our function y is equal to 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4x divided by Two. Oh, why did I write 2a here? Our a here is 1, so it's just 2. Okay, <laughs> the song was coming to my mind. It's just 2. And this is what we need to integrate. So, we have this integral from 0 to 2 of... Um, I'm going to split this into 1 half plus half of the square root of 1 plus 4x dx. I know this so doesn't make sense grammatically, but this is what I'm, we're just saying this is the same thing as this. Ta-da-da! So this is equal to 1 half of the integral of 1 dx plus the integral of, I'm going to write this as 4x plus 1 to the 1 half dx, okay? If I integrate this, I'm going to have, hey, the 1 half, or maybe I should give each of them 1 half. Okay, makes it better. So this is going to be 1 half. If I integrate this, I'm going to get O from 0 to 2. Hey, come on. So here I'm going to have um, this integral x from 0 to 2 plus. If I integrate this, I'm going to get 1 half. This is going to be 1 half. No, we're going to first add the exponent. Ooh, I forgot that. We're going to first add the 1 to it. It becomes 3 over 2. And then we're going to have 4x plus 1 raised to power 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, which is going to be times 2 over 3, which is times 2 over 3 times or divided by the derivative of this, if you apply um, u substitution, okay? I'm not wasting time on that. So u substitution means this is our u. I just did the outside integration. Now I have to divide by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 1 over 4. So watch this. <sighs> 
So I just divided by the derivative of 4x plus 1, which is 4, which is now 1 over 4. So let's, let's finish it here. So let's clean this up. If we do this, this is going to be 1 half of 2 minus 0. That's 1 half of 2, which gives us 1. So we have um, this is equal to, let's say this is i. So we have i will now be equal to, this is, you know, let's write it out. This is half of 2 minus 0, okay, plus this is going to be 1 half of, what do we get? Um, no, let's take care of the fractions. This cancels this, you're going to have 1 over 12. So we're going to have 1 over 12 of, if we plug in 2 here, is going to be 9 raised to power 3 over 2 minus 1 raised to power 3 over 2. So it's going to be 9 raised to power 3 over 2 minus 1 raised to power 3 over 2. Okay, this gives us half of 2, 1 plus 1 over 12 times what is 9 to the 3 over 2? That's going to be 27. So this is going to be 27 minus, oh, 1 to anything is 1. So right now, my answer is 1 plus 26 over 12. Yep. 26 over 12, when you do it together into a single fraction, it's supposed to be 12 plus 26 over 12, which gives us, uh, that's a 38 over 12, which is equal to, what number divides 38? Oh, it's just 2. Okay, so our answer is 19 over 6. And this is this definite integral of a nested radical. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.